Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gunner Magazine, Shooting at Country TV. Welcome to Life at a Range. Well, here we are, day three, the Friday. We're all getting ready to go off to the world. Um, I'm still at work. As you can see, here's my uh, little choo-choo puff behind me. And as I'm going to have an incredibly busy day um, doing our final prep, I thought I would take this opportunity to have a little chat about my nominations for this year's world champion. I was having to think about this during my meal break last night, and, uh, and here we go. Okay, in the open class, I think you would have to go a long way to bet against Neil Palmer. Neil has been shooting amazingly this year, and he's, he's just shooting brilliantly. The thing is, you can't also bet against Dave Ramshead. Now, Dave Ramshead is the most consistent shooter I think we've ever had in HFT. He's never failed to, uh, to qualify for the England squad, and he's just missed the consistent. He's always up there. But I'm not going to pick either of these as my choice for world champion. I think, for the first time ever, we're going to have someone win the title again. And I think that person is going to be Kieran Turner. Now, Kieran's been running around like an absolute lunatic, helping to set up the Worlds this year. Um, but I've just got a sneaking suspicion that as he was our second ever world champion, I think he will, I think he'll do it again. I've just got a sneaking suspicion that Kieran is going to do it. So my arm's getting tired. Um, okay, so Kieran for the open class. Recoiling class. Well, Brian Sampson has been the best of the field this year in the UK HFT Nationals. Owen Wilson has got his gun fixed, so I think he will be strong. And after spending a bit of time on the range yesterday using three different scopes, um, I'm more confident than I have been in a long time. But I think Brian Sampson is going to be hard to beat, so we're going to go with Brian. In the 2-2, now if you'd have asked me a week ago, I'd have said Dan Measures. Dan's a lovely bloke, brilliant shooter, but on Sunday, Graham Cargan put in a blistering 56 on a really difficult course. And I know that Graham is really wants it. And I'll be honest, I'm a bit irritated with Graham at the moment because Graham is a brilliant shooter and he could have easily made top five in the open class. And he's decided to shoot 2-2 and I understand why but I think he's he's hitting peak form and if he's ever going to be world champion I think this year could have been Graham's year so sorry Dan I think I'm going to go for Graham because I think he's just hitting the peak of his form at the right time junior class well Emily Smith um, she's shooting wonderfully brilliant girl fantastic shot be honest with you as as good as most of the adults. Um, her nearest rival is Jay Mode. Now Jay's just got himself a new style and a new scope and he's still learning that. But I think next year Jay could very well be a contender, but this year, Emily Smith. In the veterans, yeah, Mike Burgess. Mainly because if I don't say Mike, Mike's gonna hunt me down and, and be horrible to me. But Mike's a brilliant shot again the one who can take on the open class shooters so I think Mike stands a good chance um, Ken Pothecary is also uh, a, a good shot um, Jeff Ryder's not going to be there so we're going to go with Mike Burgess and in the ladies I think Myla Parson Smith again has been shooting brilliantly all year um, she's had Joanne Cogger nipping at her heels and on her day, Joe can be a superb shot, but I think we've got to go for Myla this year. She's just come out of the junior class, she's, so she's got youth on her side, and she's now shooting in the ladies and doing really, really well. Teams, um, England's never failed to win the World Championships. Last year at the British Open, we were done by Team Wales, and Team Wales are a superb, they've got a good, strong team this year, but I think Team England are still going to do it. So, they're my picks for this year's HFT World Championships. Let's see how we go. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Okay, so part of prep for the weekend is obviously to make sure you've got air. Now, I'm lucky. I shoot a spring gun. My air's all around me. 
but some people have to take an air tank. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity to give you an update on our compressor. So, how's it been going? Well, I filled quite a few little three liters. I filled a seven liter. I filled a 12 liter, but oh, that was laborious. It took ages. Um, it seems to be working quite well. It's had probably 10 hours worth of work now. Um, I've changed the oil three times, which actually does get quite expensive. Um, but each time I change the oil, it is cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. So it's gradually working all that gunk from the inside. I still say though, your best type of air, if you've got a scuba shop near you, buy a good scuba tank and go and get it filled because you'll always get permanent, clean, dry air. So we've got our three litre here. It's got about 150 in it. We're going to fill it up to about 260. Um, let's fire it up. See if I can remember how to do it. It's been a little while. Right. Undo the valve. Start the motor. Close the valves. And there we go. And we've got air going into the cylinder, so we're all going to be good, so we're going to have plenty of air for the weekend. Okay, so one thing you need to remember is when you're shooting an HFT competition, especially something like the Worlds, chances are they're going to put things in front of you to force you up the peg, and that could very well change your point of impact. So what we'll do is we'll fire a couple of shots from the deck, at our 25 yard aim point and hopefully we'll split the line and then we'll go up the peg and we'll see what change that makes okay that's very dark that lens cap off always helps oh. okay Okay, pretty much on the line. Very happy with that. Gun is cold. Again, it's just come out the bag. We left it overnight. And another one. Oh, drop light. All right, we'll do a third one. Actually, we should have followed our rules. You can see I'm rushing a bit because we're trying to get everything sorted. One. Do one more. Now, the more observant amongst you may have noticed that I've yet again got a different scope on. I now have an MTC Connect. So I've gone from an Octasan CP to an EVX to a Connect. And in a minute, I'll tell you why. There you go, that's where I expected it to hit. Um, I put the EVX on to give me more weight over the gun. The problem is, about two or three months ago, I lent my rifle, because it was on one of my PCPs at the time, to a friend who dropped it. Now, it's only been on a PCP since then, and it's not been an issue. And I started getting a little bit of zero shift. Now... I don't know if something was, you know, because he dropped it from like three feet, bang, straight on top of the scope. And I'll be honest with you, in my mind, I just no longer trusted the scope because it's been dropped. I know it's been dropped. I thought it was fine. And I've had a couple of small issues. So EVX came off. Connect come back on. Right. So we've gone on the line twice. Now we're going to come up the peg. Are we going to have the same aim point? I actually don't know because I've not done this test with this scope so I'm actually quite interested really shouldn't be putting a scope on the day before the worlds it's not particularly good oh that feels uncomfortable and we've hit above the line 
Now doing something once means nothing. Let's replicate it and see if it happens again. Oh, to be honest with you, that was me. You can see I'm rushing. Right. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. Breathing, hold, trigger. Well, that just hit on the same spot quite high. So I need to do a little bit more practice up the peg because I can guarantee you some of the shots we're gonna be up the peg at the Worlds. Remember what I said in one of my earlier videos? My head is now looking, it's in a different position. Um, my head is more upright. I'm looking through a different part of my eye. Um, it's gonna make a difference. So just out of interest, you're not going to see this because I'm not going to run out and put the camera out. But I'm going to shoot our 40 yard and let's see what happens. You might be able to hear it hit. Hopefully it'll go through the hole. Okay, 25 mil, 40 yards. Hit half a kill high. So, to be honest with you, that's exactly what I expected it to do. I found with me, with my eyes, if I come up the peg, I have a different aim point than if I'm shooting off the deck. Now, some of the best shooters in the country, people like Perry Broad, who I should have actually mentioned as a possible winner for the World Championships, he always shoots up the peg. So, so does Steve Pope. Um, lots of people shoot always up the peg. I like to shoot off the deck. Now, if you're good at shooting up the peg, you've only ever got one set of aim points. I like to shoot off the deck, so I need to have two sets. So I need one range card for off the deck, one for up the peg. Now something I can guarantee you're gonna be doing at any event is a supported shot. Supported, uh, supported knee. One thing I can guarantee you'll be doing at any event is supported shots. Now these can either be kneel or stand, and they can go with a 35 mil out to 40 yards, or with a 25 mil out to 30, but Check the rules just in case I got it wrong. Or a stand only shot. Now, as a lot of you know who watch my incomprehensible drivel, I don't do a lot of kneelers because I've got a problem with my knees. So I take everything standing. My issue is because of the astigmatism in my right eye, when I take a standing shot, all my pellets go left. Let me demonstrate. And as we know, the range hates me, so this will probably either go right or on the line. Now I know this gun is absolutely cock on. And there we go, just fractionally left of the line. That was quite a good one. Also, don't do shots like this wearing crocs, wear boots. Now you can either take a wide stance or you can come up close. You pay your money, you take your choice. But again, and there we go, left. And I fired when I was directly on the line. Now that's me, doesn't mean that's you, but all I know is for me, I just favor the right hand side of the kill whenever I'm doing a standing shot. And to a certain degree that actually works quite well because it means I get to see more of the kill and my crosshairs aren't blocking it out. So shoot paper, see where your pellets are going. And if you need to get a bit of stability, 
you know, basically put a rest out and do it, then so be it. But as we've shown, I set the gun up prone, and I know it's dead on, but when I come up the peg, I'm my eyes change. When I'm again looking through the peg, uh, sorry, looking through the scope on a supported stand, again my head's in a different position again. So don't assume that just because your zero is your zero when you're prone, that it will be the same when you're kneeling or you're standing. Hope that makes sense. Right, so now we're going to pack up the car and I think we're going to get ready to go. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, we've gone over a few extra little bits. Um, I'll be honest with you, not as in-depth as I really wanted to do, but doing these, videoing each day, editing it, putting it out, it actually took way longer than than i thought and we're leaving fairly soon and if i wanted to get this video out today i had to keep it fairly short we're off to the game fair i'm and the world championships i'm so excited it's an absolutely amazing event and if you're you know down by western under lizard western under lizard and you're near the game fair please Come and have a go. If you see me wandering about, please come up, say hello. I'm always happy to chat. Anyone who knows me knows I'm always happy to chat. Um, the only time that I won't be is if I'm marshalling or something like that, or if I'm running around like a lunatic. And so if I have to say, look, I'll come back and find you later, I will come back and find you. Um, but sometimes, because I'm doing a bit of marshalling and other stuff, that uh, you, look, you understand. So we're going to pack the car. Now, I've got the memory of a goldfish, so I use a list. I'll put the list up here, um, and it basically reminds me, gun, pellets, glove, um, tools in case there's a problem, mat, beanbag, chair, a um, couple of pens, first aid kit with headache tablets, because, you know, guys, we can't always rely on ladies to have headache tablets. All I know is if ever I've got a headache at work, I can guarantee you one of our lady drivers will have a stash of headache tablets in their bag. So you ladies, you're wonderful. The other thing to remember is we're going to a game fair. Now, I'm not sure what the food situation is going to be this weekend. I've been told we are going to have a burger van, but we've got 360 shooters, so the queues can get massive. Um, also, sometimes I've been at events in the past where you've had to take out a small mortgage for a wheat cup of tea and a burger, not at the Midland Game Fair, but at other places. It's been horrendous. So I personally like to take my own supplies. Also, I'm doing Slimming World. I've lost a stone and a half. Um, so I want to think about what I'm going to eat because I don't want to eat a big bacon sandwich and spike my blood sugar just before I'm going out shooting. So I'll take stuff that slow release and that will go for me, work for me. Also, when you get back, I don't want to go and queue for 20 minutes to get a coffee. I'd rather have a flask and, and do it myself. But that's just me. It's probably because I'm 52 years old and I'm a curmudgeonly so-and-so. What more? Um, I've got Gene and Alex who are going to be rocking up in a little while. We're getting ready to go. Um, strongly recommend when you get into shooting, find some like-minded people that you can travel with. It, just, it doesn't just make it cheaper, but it's really nice when you go out for dinner and you go out with your mates the night before the world's night during the worlds you can have a few beers chat with your mate talk some rubbish talk about your day and when you've had a bad day your, your mates are there to uh, to put their arm around you and say you're an idiot which i get quite a lot usually gene says did you get the stand and we all go no we all miss it she goes i got that we love gene so that's pretty much about it tomorrow this time tomorrow what is time now uh, it's just gone 12 i'll be getting ready to shoot second session Hopefully everything will have gone well. Um, I know for a fact that the team have been out there for over a week setting up the courses. Um, I think Kieran is probably, might very well end up in the hospital having some kind of nervous breakdown. Um, but absolutely amazing. Everyone has pulled together. They've done a fantastic job. The course setters, the organisers, the competitors, everyone has been superb. So it's going to be a fantastic weekend. I really hope I come back with some silverware and it'll be lovely to be Spring Gun World Champion again. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed these three videos. Tomorrow's video will be out uh, basically whenever I can get it out. Um, right, I've made a decision. 
Sunday it's going to be too hard to get the video recorded because then we've got to travel back which is like three and a half hours and then we're going to have to edit it and it won't be going out till midnight and at which point no none of you are going to watch it so I'm the video from day two is going to be out Tuesday I'm not going to release it on Monday because of the funeral of Her Majesty the Queen um, so day two will be out Tuesday and I aim to put that out at midday on Tuesday um, maybe watch out for a little video on Sunday which I'm not sure if we're gonna put on YouTube or on our Facebook page life at the range um, I might just put a little video out just letting you know how we all did those in the car um, we might do that I'm not 100% sure I've just got to check with a few people first but look out for a short video Sunday night um, if we can do it so that's about it thank you so much for joining us thank you for all the comments oh one thing i just want to answer um somebody asked hang on this is the world's the world's happened in hungary um a few weeks a few months ago right there are two world there are two organizations there's a whfta that's us lot we've been doing the world championships since 2009 and we are you know basically we are the, the main thing then you had the whfto who started three or four years back who started to do their own worlds predominantly in central europe but apparently they are going to go around the world uh, nothing to do with us um no bad blood crack on they can enjoy it but so we're the whfta we've been around since 2009 as far as i'm concerned we are by far the best no criticism of you other guys and apparently the other guys will be coming to england next year um for the northern shooting show um, I think Ian Bainbridge is going to be something to do with that. So, but yeah, so we're WHFTA, the biggest and the best. Take care, all. Ta-da.